Hello there and uh, welcome to another video by the MXQ project. So today's video is a bit more generic. It covers a wide range of devices. So this is going to be a video showing you how to run Linux on Android. So it's going to kind of run like an application. It's not going to actually replace Android. It's just going to run alongside it if that makes sense. So this can only be done on rooted devices. Now I want to cover it on an MXQ. I want to show you how, show you how to do it on an MXQ box. Now these tend to come with rooted Android firmware out the factory. So does the MXQ Pro and a whole bunch of devices tend to come with rooted firmware, especially these Android TV boxes. If you've maybe got a mobile phone, so I've got one here, just, it's just a, it's just a cheap Chinese one. Um, this, this, this thing here. Now this comes again with rooted firmware and it will run on this as well. So you can have a full Linux distribution run on this as well. So if you've got a Samsung or a Sony LG, as long as it's got rooted firmware on it, you can actually use this tutorial to actually do it. Uh, if you've not got rooted firmware, I'm afraid you can't do it. Uh, it's some of the things like BusyBox and stuff like that, all the, all the applications we need do require root access and unfortunately you can't do it. You can root your device, it's not that hard to do actually. I'm not going to cover that obviously because we could be probably here all day trying to do that. But yeah, there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to do it for certain devices, especially name brand ones and stuff like that. If you've got a, if you're TV box, for example, isn't rooted and it's an unbranded one, then the chances are you're not going to be able to do that. But the chances are your TV box has probably got rooted firmware anyway, and there's plenty of easy ways to find out whether it's rooted or not. Super user, which is one of the apps we're going to need for this process, does actually tell you whether your box is rooted or not. It detects the root access or, or not. So we're going to be able to run Linux which is an operating system, it's a desktop operating system. We're also going to be able to run different flavors of Linux. So we've got Ubuntu, uh, we've got Debian, and we've got different desktops as well for that. So we've got um, the Mate desktop, the LXD desktop, and a few others as well. So it kind of gives you an opportunity to try a lot of different Linux distributions. And if you're not sure what all those are, you can easily go on the internet, have a look around, see what they're all are about, and see what suits you the most. Now, we've got to remember this is going to be running alongside Android. So don't expect amazing performance. I've installed it on the MXQ box and this is this tutorial is going to be around that, based around it. Um, and yeah, it works. It, it works actually quite well, more than why I expected it to. Remember, this distribution of Linux, any distribution of Linux, is going to take up a considerable amount of space on your box. But if you just want to have a play around, it's certainly worth a shot. It's certainly, um, yeah, it's certainly worth a try anyway to do this. And remember, we're using TV boxes on a TV, so that full screen will allow you to get the most out of it. Obviously, you can actually do this on a mobile as well. So if you've got mobile handy or something like that, and yeah, you can probably try this again on there. Uh, and um, the functionality, you can like zoom in, zoom out, and touch screen and stuff like that. And that all function works on this. It doesn't work perfectly. Linux does run. It, like I tried Ubuntu Mate last night and yeah, it worked fine. You can connect to the internet and stuff like that. It uses your Android firmware for the internet connection and you then can proceed onwards and install things. And it shouldn't damage your system either. Um, rooting your de device might damage it. So if you haven't got a rooted device and you want to root it, then that's up to you guys and you need to go and find a good tutorial somewhere for your particular hardware. But if you've got a rooted device, then we can move on to the first part. So load up your Android device, whether it's a TV box or your mobile phone. Obviously make sure you're using rooted firmware as well. So what are you going to need for applications for this? The first one being BusyBox. Once you've installed this, you don't need to actually do anything with it, just as long as it's installed on your Android device. Next thing you're going to need is Linux Deploy, and then VNC Viewer, 
and then super user now if you've already got rooted firmware the chances are you've probably got super su already pre-installed but all of these can be found on the play store now i'll leave a link in the description to all the, the individual ones you'll need so the first thing you need to do is just load up super user and just accept it just accept new user and that's all you need to do is then you can just shut it down and then the next thing you can load up linux deploy so let's go into there so depending on, on your device and its orientation so obviously i'm using this on a tv screen so my menus up here on your mobile phone it's probably at the bottom somewhere you'll see this like little download icon click on there and then you'll get the option these options click on distribution so I've already pre-installed Ubuntu. You can try Debian or some other distribution of Linux. It really depends on which one you like the look of. I'd suggest researching on the internet to have a look at all the different types and which one will appeal to you. But Ubuntu or Debian are the main ones that we'll probably use. So choose your distribution and then next thing we need to do is select username. I select mine as root. It doesn't matter what you choose, just as long as you can remember it. And then the password again, same same thing. I use root because I can remember that. And then next thing you need to do is you need to go down to GUI. Now yours won't be enabled. Yours will look like that. So just click and then it'll enable it. This just gives you the actual Ubuntu user interface. Now, next thing you can choose is desktop environment. Now, I choose Mate because I quite like the look of Mate. XFCE is quite good and LXD is as well is quite good as well. So once you've done with that, you can come out of there. And then you can select the three dots just here. And then select install. And then click OK. Once you click OK, it's going to take quite a while to actually do this because it's going to download an entire operating system. Just leave it for about 10, 20 minutes. It took me actually about an hour because I've got quite a slow internet connection. It might be quicker for you. Uh, it all depends. Once you click OK, Super User will actually ask you for permission to do this. Just click Yes and then it will start the process. If I just cancel that a second, as you'll see just here, it will start bringing up all the different information where it's downloading all the stuff from, all the um, files from. And then eventually you'll say at the bottom deploy. Now that will give you an indication that it's actually finished. And all you've got to do is click start and then click OK. And then you can come out of this application. And then we can load up VNC Viewer. Now obviously I've already set mine up, but you would click this plus sign, this green plus sign, what you need to type is local host colon 5900 and then click, click even create and then click connect. So the system will connect and what we've got to do now is we've got to type in that password. So that password we typed in with Linux deploy. So mine is root and then we click continue and then it will prepare our desktop and here we are into Linux Ubuntu with the Mate desktop now this doesn't come pre-installed with many applications we've got to do our ourselves so this has already got terminal something called terminal loaded up now if you're using a mobile as you can see at the top there you've got different selection so you can load up your keyboard as you can see so you can use your finger to type you've also got the option to change it to a mouse mouse sort of options now i've got actually connected a keyboard and a mouse to my mxq box i've got plenty of usb ports that and it works perfectly fine obviously if you're using a mobile all you can really use is your touch screen so I've installed Firefox on this as well. I've also installed Kodi Media Center. It doesn't load for some reason, I'm not sure why. But to use, to install apps onto Linux, you need to use something called Terminal. Now that's just being loaded up. 
since the start of this video but if you just select as you can see the option just there just next to root at localhost all you need to do is type apt dash get and then type install and then choose whichever Linux program you would like to run so that could be again it could be something like Firefox so you would type I think you, it's an ISO easel, I think you type for the Firefox distribution I'm going to try and install GIMP here GIMP is like a photo editor sort of thing and we can install it Linux is totally different to Windows so if you're not familiar with it it might take you a bit of time as you can see it started to install and there we have it that's that's pretty much Linux really um, we could be here all week actually discussing all the different things but because of the way it runs and it's running alongside Android it gets to use your Android actual uh, internet so when we want to disconnect we just click the X button on the top hand screen and then we can go to Linux deploy and all we've got to do is click stop and then just load up Linux deploy once you want to start again click start and go back into VNC viewer and then do exactly the same process and there we have it so there we have it guys that is Linux running alongside Android on rooted Android firmware hopefully if you've enjoyed this video and you've learned a great deal Linux is one of those operating systems that takes a bit of time to get used to but it's certainly worth a shot and definitely worth a look at if you've never used it before and you maybe just want to give it a go on your Android device and then maybe even want to try it on your actual prop computer so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you dislike it give me a dislike that's absolutely fine and we shall see you in the next video